guys, this is Maria. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be sharing quite a few ideas how you can interact with your seven months old and also give a few updates on my seven months old baby Juliet, what she's been doing, how she, what she's... If you're new to my channel, I am a mom of three. I also have a six-year-old and a four-year-old and Juliet is my third baby. Uh, I've also developed a Montessori-inspired curriculum for toddlers that you can download uh, through the link on the screen and I will also leave it in the description below. It kind of goes over uh, how to set up the environment at home, what activities you can do. You can even actually purchase a startup box for me to set it up uh, easily at home or you can just sign up for the curriculum and it gives you all of the materials that you need to purchase as the list on a week-by-week -week basis. Without further ado, let's talk about today's topic. In this video, I'm not gonna go into too many details of all the things she's doing. I've actually filmed her six months update and I also filmed a separate video on baby led weaning and starting solids. So all of those will be linked at the end of this video. But today I kinda wanna touch upon a few major skills that she's developed over the past few weeks and how I helped her, what things you might wanna be doing with your uh, baby and also how you can interact with them in a new way because they are so much more interactive. Okay, so number one is that her stranger danger picked up quite a bit. So if before I could give her to like grandmas and, and um, aunts, she would kind of be okay with it. She wouldn't cry per se, but now if I give her to somebody, she immediately starts looking for me. She will sit in their arms for a second and then stretch her little chubby arms towards me. If I leave the room, she's aware of it. Uh, it starts looking for me, calling out. She's not a fussy baby. She doesn't cry much. So usually it's typically like, oh, oh, I hear her looking for me. So that was like one of the bigger emotional milestones that happened. The next several milestones are kind of all connected. Uh, from the very start, your baby starts working on developing the muscles first in their neck, then their back, then their core muscles and development of their core muscles is probably one of the most important things because that's what helps, helps them to sit up and eventually start crawling then stand up. Core strength is, people don't realize how important it is. So when your baby pulls up their legs and starts uh, sucking in their thumbs and playing with their toes and doing all those things, it's really important. It actually helps them build those muscles. When they're sitting up, reaching forward and picking things up and straightening their back again, all those things help them develop those muscles and that kind of prerequisite for them to be able to do all the other things. Now, Juliet has been working on uh, trying to crawl. She started getting an all fours and she's starting to rock. Sometimes she's able to lunge forward. Sometimes she's not, sometimes she pushes back. So she's in this in-between stage. Uh, she's also been sitting in a side position and side position and honestly a prerequisite for them to be able to start crawl because the babies, if you'll think about it, they're sitting on their uh, booty and then they have to readjust their weight and typically they're going sideways, going over one of the legs. So uh, them being in a side position is very helpful in trying to encourage that position for them to make the next step is one of the things you might want to work on. So here's a few things that I worked on with Juliet to get her to this point. Now she would be straightening her arms for a very long time, but she would push backwards. And I've mentioned it in my previous updates. So she would push and push and keep uh, going backwards from the where she wanted to go. It was extremely frustrating for her. I still let her do it because she needed to build up the strength at the top here. Uh, eventually I noticed that she started not only just pushing up, she started kind of bringing her body in a plank position. And then that's where I was like, okay, let me help her out. So the way I've done it, uh, I put my hands behind her feet when she was straightened up. And then eventually she started getting her knees, trying to get her knees under herself. I also sometimes help her and kind of scoop her knees and um, underneath her hips to get her into that rocking position. I also a lot of the times put my hands right behind her feet to help her lunge forward instead of pushing backwards. With all of those things, now she's actually grasping it to do it on her own. When it comes to sitting in side sitting position, that's something she started doing all on her own. The only thing I am doing now, and I've also noticed that she 
kind of gravitates to her and I do a lot follow your child so I never do anything up until they're ready for it so she would sit on the side and started waiting for her toys and then started late lunging for them and that's when I was like okay well let me try to push that toy a little bit further and see what she does now she constantly is practicing this rolling over motion to get on her tummy from a seated position now more and more like a fine motor skills development uh, babies at this age obviously they take stuff with her their hands put it in their mouth and put it down they also bang lots of toys on everything a, a big and important skill is them passing one toy a toy from one hand to another and for that i try to use toys like balls or uh, the cups with pads from grims that i have some friends from grims those are the things that uh, seem to work the best for them to use both hands simultaneously so both sides of their brain are working and they also realize that they can take it from one hand to another now moving on to a few fun games that we've been doing that she absolutely loves so i started doing peekaboo with her uh i started doing it about six months i just hide behind the blanket and i let her pull the blanket down she loves and she loves loves playing it it's a great game on taking turns eventually what's going to happen what happened with my son when i did that he was the one who started pulling the blanket on top of his head and then pulling it down cracking up so you establishing that connection playing that game it is really sweet and uh, works on quite a few milestones as well another great game that we're playing is uh rolling the ball i roll the ball to her it's a bit larger rubber ball that has a bit of the cavity so it's really easy for her to pick it up i roll it to her and then she picks it up she mouths it and then uh rolls somewhat rolls pushes it back to me um when she does push it back to me i do yay because babies at this age they like uh big expressions on your face so they can read it easily your emotions and your tone of the voice so i encourage if something gets knocked down i do oh uh oh if something gets dropped oh uh oh if it is something amazing i clap and i say yay to give her that positive reinforcement she also loves looking at herself in the mirror and licking her reflection uh, it is very good for speech development. So when you and your child have this mirror time, try to uh, imitate certain sounds like o, a, u, a, m, m, b, all those sounds that they are already kind of working on. Um, and of course, uh, do back-to-back -back conversations in the baby babble. Uh, whatever your child is making, whatever sound they are making, try to respond to them. Also, babies at this age do love rhyming and uh, nursery rhymes and music. So playing that and dancing, having that kind of connection. If you guys enjoyed this video, it gave you some ideas on how you can interact with your uh, little one. They're getting so much more fun and so many things and are able to do so many things that they haven't been able to do in, in the past. If you love this video, make sure to give me a like, subscribe to my channel, come back for more mommy related content. Again, I have three kids, so I cover different age groups from creative seven year olds to uh, dinosaur loving boys to babies. And of course, it's always inspired by Montessori approach and like mindful parenting. I hope to see you soon.